And for many people, it's um, difficult to understand atoms. They are, they are invisible, they're incredibly small, and hard to imagine. At the same time, this knowledge is of uttermost importance because atoms very rarely are broken down or destroyed, so they are actually recycled all the time. In my body, I have atoms that have been into dinosaurs, have been here on Earth for billions of years, and right now they're here building my body. And of course, if we want um, people and to understand the importance of recycling and treating waste properly, a basic knowledge of atoms is very important. So this is an activity that can help children to get a um, kind of deeper understanding of how atoms are put together and how they are built. Um, and um, we suggest that you start by looking at the periodic table. Actually, this table is the most famous table uh, in, on Earth, I will propose. Uh, it's uh, used in every country. Um, the writings in the table is the same in every country because chemistry is an international language. And it's interesting to just start to look and ask what does this mean? What are all these names, these letters you see inside uh, this table? And quite soon you can, you, you will together realize that actually you have heard about a lot of these uh, substances before. You have, for example, heard of the O is for oxygen, the C is for carbon, N for nitrogen. You may have heard of lead, you find here as a PB. They have heard of gold, that's AU. They've heard of mercury, that's HD, etc. etc. So um, you can go through some common elements and, and um, ask them if they've heard of that before and you can show them where that element is in the table. And then explain them that this is an um, overview of all the known atoms we know of. Uh, approximately 100 of them are in nature and the rest uh, are man-made in laboratories. And these um, atoms may be compared to different types of Lego bricks. Uh, they can be put together in numerous different ways to build different stuff. And this is how everything around us is built. And um, it is called the periodic table. And the reason for that is that when this uh, was discovered, when the atoms were discovered, um, uh, the researchers realized that some of them had very similar uh, qualities and they were placed underneath it other, each other. So there's a kind of pattern here. Every atom underneath each other have a lot in common. And um, one row is called a period. So let's then look at how atoms are built, how are they, what's their structure. And I think it's nice to start with helium, a noble gas, because it has a core with two protons, two neutrons, and surrounding that core you have two electrons. And um, to visualize this and build models of this invisible um, atom, you can use pompons and metal wire. And let me now just illustrate helium. Uh, let's say this, uh, these are protons, these are neutrons, and these are electrons. If I just place it out here on the table, I get four uh, particles in the atomic core and two electrons surrounding the core. Oops, there, yeah. And um, we will not build this atom, but the, um, the students have a picture of it in their student manual, an illustration of it, yes. So, uh, and if you look at the periodic table, uh, you see that helium is place number two. And that is just because it has two protons in its nucleus. Actually, the number of protons in the nucleus decide which atom we are talking about. So all these different atoms with all these different qualities, they are made of the same basic particles. The only exception is here hydrogen, which actually doesn't have neutrons in its uh, uh, core. It only has one proton 
and it is surrounded by one electron, like this. So this is a model of hydrogen. Um, so one thing that also can be interesting to explain or important to explain that the electrons surrounding the nucleus are placed at certain energy levels or maybe shells. So in the innermost shell there are room for two electrons. That's why there are only two atoms in this road. And then you may ask how many um, electrons are there room for in the next um, energy level. And if they count here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, they realize there is room for eight electrons at this level. And the same for the next period. And as I said, down here it will be more complicated, so we won't go into that. That actually, we will just work with three atoms, uh, and that's hydrogen, and that's um, oxygen, and, um, and carbon. That's what we will work with in this course. And right now we will build a model of, start building a model of hydrogen. And that is actually very easy because all you need is one proton. And then the trick is to get this metal wire through the pon pon. And the trick is actually to just go a little bit back and forth and all of a sudden you find a smooth way. And it's just to tighten it like this. And then to this um, proton you just attach uh, an electron and uh, again just try a little and all of a sudden it goes very easily through. And here is a very simple model of hydrogen. But now uh, every child will also build a model of oxygen and that's a bit more complicated. You have to look again at the periodic table Oxygen is number eight. So how many protons does oxygen have? Yes, it has eight protons in its nucleus. And how many neutrons does uh, uh, oxygen have? Actually the same number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So then you need a long, uh, 30 centimeters long metal wire and uh, uh, put all these uh, pompons on that wire like I've done here and curl it together and you get a really really nice nucleus. Uh, but before you do that it's good to just put it all down on the table to make sure you are um, uh, have it quite clear what to build together. So what is surrounding uh, this um, uh, core in the inner lever? Well you, you have room for two electrons there so that's these two um, uh, electrons. And then at the next uh, level, you have room for eight. Um, you have room for eight, but you only have six more to go. So you have to place one, two, three, four, five, six. Because all together, uh, the core of oxygen is surrounded by eight electrons. So now we have two in the energy level and six in the outer energy level. And I um, uh, uh, suggest that you um, here I have made the core and I suggest that you just attach um, the inner level electrons by um, so I just add like an electron here to the core and then I add one more on the other side. So there are, is now the core of oxygen with the two electrons at the inner um, energy level. And then I need um, the six in the outer level, I put them here on a circle or uh, metal wire and I can attach that um, on the outside like this. Like this. So now we have built oxygen and here we have hydrogen. 
Okay, I will build one more model of um, hydrogen. I have one here. And um, now we will ask the students, what happens if we combine this uh, atom with these two atoms? What do we get? We have two hydrogens, H, and we have one O. And I'm quite sure quite a few knows that this is, can be H2O, that's the water molecule. And if you look at um, this, this atom, two of these uh, electrons doesn't have a partner. They're actually missing. There is room for two more electrons in this shell, and it's not, they are not there. So by sharing electrons with hydrogen, hydrogen gets the, a kind of feeling of having two electrons in its inner shell, and oxygen gets a kind of feeling of having eight electrons in its outer shell, and they're like both happy. And um, this is um, the one way that uh, atoms form molecules. They share at electrons. So we suggest that all children build this model. However, if they find it challenging, they can also build one together. And also during a break, maybe they want to build a new uh, atom. Uh, we will um, equip me with, with quite a few pompons so it's possible to um, explore this activity in a flexible manner. Um, and it can also be a good idea to start with just practicing how to get the metal wire through the pompons. The thing is that when, it, now I was lucky, it, it, I, well, it uh, went through on the first trial, but sometimes it's a bit hard and then it's important to move it a little and go a bit back and forth till you find a way. And that's, that's the trick. So, well, and um, of course this is a very um, uh, demanding way of building uh, mole molecule models. So therefore we have a different uh, trick for studying molecules.